church, we're very glad to have you here this morning. Let's all just stand up and sing together today. Yeah. 
It is over, but I wanted you guys to see it one more time. So, uh, because we had, I think I got a picture of that, which might be two slides in. I think I put it in different. So, there you go. So, we had a great time yesterday at our pancake breakfast. So, this was a first time. And Wendy had actually asked that we do this last year. And uh, there, we were just so busy, had so many things going on, we couldn't squeeze it in. Then Miranda said, again, let's do it this year. So, we did it. We raised $854 because someone just gave 10 Ten dollars more today because they weren't able to get there, and unfortunately, we don't have any pancakes left over for you, Kristen. So you don't get any pancakes for that. But it was a great day. We definitely learned some things, and I wanted to uh, talk, apologize to Fred and Lisa. They were, I think, the first two people that got here, and their pancakes were cold. So, but thankfully, she alerted us to that fact, and uh, so we fixed how we were doing things, and I think it was better throughout. So it was a great day. So thanks for all those people that came. Thanks for all those people that helped, and we're definitely going to do it again. We don't have a date yet. Um, 
We're not going to bombard you with that, but it was just a great day. The picture that's up here is, um, so Nathan was there, and uh, he offered to pay for all the first shift uh, policemen that were on patrol yesterday. So several of them came by and ate, so that was pretty cool for them to hang out. And you see what table they sat with, my mom and Bob and then Brother Jim. So the police knew they needed to keep an eye on those guys. So that's why they chose to sit, sit there. They were the troublemakers of the, the group. <laughs> yes, yeah, they were probably felt like they were in heaven hanging out with all, those, uh, all that support. So thank you, guys. It was a great day. The students, if they were there the whole time, made $60 each. So it was a great Great fundraiser for them, and um, so thanks. It was good, good pancakes and sausage, too. All right, if you want to find out about the next pancake sausage or, when we're, or breakfast or when we're not doing it, you can text your information to 502-694-2180. We'll add you to the list, and we'll send that email out. You'll get your worship guide each week and any upcoming events that uh, we have coming up. Speaking of which, if who or where's my 50 and older crowd this can be if you feel that way, look that way, wish you were that way. Uh, so this coming, what? Uh, all right. So this coming Tuesday at noon, if you're not working or if you can take your lunch, you can uh, come at noon and hang out for our senior lunch. And Jan, did you make that go away? There you go. <laughs> so that's all right. Sharon, any particular thing we need to bring? All right, so we're having pizza, so we'll provide the pizza. So if you want to bring a side, we love desserts and specifically chocolate desserts, but we're not picky when it comes to desserts. So that's at noon on Tuesday, and at noon, also at 1 on Tuesday is our blood drive. Yeah, that's kind of hard to see. So from 1 to 6 this coming Tuesday in the gym. So if you've got some extra blood, want to save some lives, you can go online, redcross.org, or you can, um, you can probably show up and give blood and um, save three lives every time you give. So pretty, pretty cool deal there. And we're, if, you need, if you don't have some food or if you know somebody that needs some food, send them our way when, Thursday night from 6 to 7.30. That'll be in the gym. So it's our monthly food giveaway. So we'll be doing that Thursday from 6 to 7.30. And mugs and muffins are the 27. So they're again for ladies and I don't care how old you are. I know we can't ask that, but um, the 27th at 9.30 is our mugs and muffins, and I think that is all. Oh, there's your ladies' night, too, to the 23rd. You guys should be a part of that. That'd be pretty cool. This would be something new. Find out about Trades of Hope and how they're helping women break the uh, poverty and human trafficking, so, and um, they're gonna, the 23rd, yeah. All right, I forgot one more thing. Where are my camp students and leaders? All right, so this is the get down. So once one day during the camp, we have this time where it's, uh, they have a talent show. So figure out your talent. If you're going to do something, if you're going to dance, if you're going to play guitar, if you're going to sing, you're going to juggle, whatever. But the theme is fandemonium, so where you rep your favorite team colors. So be thinking about what IU gear you're going to wear because that's who you want to represent. Way to be on that. Way to be on. All right, I'm going to shut up now, and then I'm going to pray and. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for this time that we can gather together, that we can enjoy being in your presence, that we can learn about you and worship you, Lord, and just for all the different people that you send our way. And uh, Lord, as we continue to do that, Lord, I pray that we would open up our hearts uh, to focus and just be thankful for all that you've done for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our kindergarten through fifth graders, if you want to follow Miss Sandy out here, she's going to take you upstairs. The rest of us get to stay in here and worship. stand and worship together again this morning.
shame was wide Your arms were wider And my guilt was great Your love was greater still You ran to me when I was naked You pulled me from the depths of darkness Into your light again Into your light again And my sin was deep Your grace was deeper And my shame was wild Just come before you this morning and just uh, 
just lift up praise in your house, Father. I just uh, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your kindness and mercy, Lord. And right now, I just pray over Daniel as he brings your word this morning. I pray that you open our hearts and just uh, just help us to receive what you have to say in your house this morning, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Hello. 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 It's, uh, you know, I think today this side's winning. Last week, last week it was clearly this side. Today it's this side. So you guys are good. Good job this side. Good job left. <coughs> that's wrong. No, that's, wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. That's wrong, right? Um, Thanks for being here. Uh, glad everybody's here today. And we're going to be in John 18, 15 through 27. And uh, I was kind of, um, you know, this, 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 this passage is, is uh, famous for, for Peter's three denials, but um, I kind of got into thinking about this. And, and we mentioned this in the, um, in the youth group on Wednesday night a few weeks ago. And it kind of, this question was in my mind, like, why, why do we sin, right? Even, even people that are saved sin, right? We, we, we still do, no matter how old or how young you are or how faithful you are. It, it, it still happens, and, and it's this, this question like, what? we know what's right, we know what's wrong, but yet this stuff still happens. We still do what's wrong, even when we know, when we know what's right. Have you ever asked this question, why do humans, us, why do we sin? And uh, obviously, there are lots of reasons, um, but we know, we know what's right, and we know what's wrong, and yet all of us will at times choose to do what is wrong, even though we know it's wrong. Jeff's, Jeff's affir- affirmation here. It's me, Jeff, right? We know I, I do these things, right? So, uh, and even sometimes when we've promised Never to do it. How many people have done something that they promised they would never do? Anybody? Made that? Yep. See? We, sin, when it comes down to it, it's personal. Um, the root of our sin lies within ourselves. Um, all of us sin differently. And that has to do with who we are, what our personality is, and what our temptations are, ultimately. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the choice might be different depending on the sin, but it, it's, it's always our choice. And I think it's important to know that sin is, is something we choose to do. It's not uh, anyone else's fault, and it's, 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 it's what we chose to do. We'll never be forced to sin, uh, and we'll never also be forced to do what is right. It's to God's credit that he wants our worship and obedience um, worship and obedience, if you think about those two things, they don't really mean anything to the person they are given to if they are forced, right? God can force us to worship him. He can force us to obey him, <clears throat> but he wants worship and obedience. If he forced it out of us, it would not mean anything to him. Thank you. The uh, uh, poll- my back of my throat is coated in tree pollen, grass pollen, uh, flower pollen, and whatever other kind of pollen there might be out there. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, it is allergy season, uh, is, is in full swing. So what makes us choose to put someone or thing over God in his place of worship or to choose disobedience to his ways? What makes us choose these things? Often, it comes down to our own comfort or pleasure in getting in the way of us doing what is right. We simply choose what is better for us in the short term rather than what we know is right or wrong. Today, we're going to look at two people in this passage, and we're going to see what they chose to do and what it means for us. So John 18, 15 through 27, and I'm going to take this. Water, Matt, thank you very much before, uh, before I read here. <clears throat> so 
Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Jesus is just, I said the stage here, Jesus has just been arrested and he is being taken to the, to the temple to meet with the high priest Caiaphas uh, by the temple guards. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. <clears throat> but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. And he replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, inside, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, outside, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? And he denied it, saying, I am not. And one of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him, didn't I see you with him in the garden? And again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Lord, as we get... I just want to thank you for bringing us here this week. Uh, thank you for all that you do. And uh, as we get into your word, I just want to ask that you open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive what you have to say and just speak through this sermon, Lord, to, uh, to deliver that. In your name we pray. Amen. So we'll start here on verse uh, 17, where one of the guards is asking Peter, you aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? Or a lady there is. And she, Peter replied, I am not. We see Peter and one of the other disciples outside the temple where Jesus is inside being questioned. He has followed Jesus after his arrest, which Brian recounted last week in his sermon. And you may remember several weeks ago, in just one day earlier in real time, that Jesus was speaking to the disciples at the Last Supper. In this conversation, Jesus notified the disciples that one of them would betray him. After trying to figure out who it was and going through a, a, a dunking in bread, Peter boldly proclaimed to Jesus that he would not betray him, and in fact, he would gladly lay down his life for him. Jesus was always trying to keep Peter from getting ahead of himself, and he told him a small bit about his future and let him in on the fact that not only was he not ready to lay down his life for Jesus, but soon he would not once but three times deny that he even knew Jesus. Now let's think about Peter. <clears throat> You may know someone like Peter. You may even be someone like Peter. I think often when people, uh, when I, I'll just say, when I read through the scriptures and see Peter, um, I see a lot of myself. He made big claims about what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. Jesus, knowing Peter and knowing what his future held, I have to imagine laughed a lot of times on the inside when he was listening to Peter proclaim things on the outside. Um, just like a parent, um, you know, when we listen to sometimes our, sometimes our children make big, bold claims, right? 
Um, you know, I, I know in youth groups sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll hear a, a, a young teen boy, 13, 12 or 13 years old, talking about going pro in the NBA. And as a kid, it seems so possible. But as an adult, often we're like, oh. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's, that's nearly I- I- impossible. Peter was constantly um, doing, doing these things. And uh, there's a, uh, I, I, I can't think, I, I was thinking about it last week when Brian, I sent this on, uh, I sent Brian this little meme, and it was a dog um, standing on the edge of a swimming pool. And it, it shows like three or four pictures, and the, the, the caption says, um, Jesus, it said, come, and then it said, Peter, and it shows the dog jumping off into the swimming pool and going, and it, the last picture is the dog sinking, and its eyes are just as big as, as its food bowl, you know, and uh, it, only Peter would have thought when he saw the Lord of heaven and earth walking to him on a rolling sea, hey, I, I want to do that too. Can, can I walk on water? Only Peter would have, would have, would have thought that. <clears throat> always confident, always assured, regardless of whether he was right or wrong. He was positive about what he was saying. It was probably this boldness that was behind Peter's calling in the first place. It was going to take boldness to do what was going to come after Jesus' death and spread the gospel among the people of all the nations. But I bet there were several times Peter had Jesus wanting to send the SMH message to his father. That's shaking my head for the uninitiated. We can almost hear Jesus shaking his head when he tells Peter about these denials. Peter being Peter was just as headstrong in the fact that he would never deny Jesus. But less than, 24 hour, less than 24 hours later, here we are with Peter laying down the first of those three denials. Are you one of his disciples? No, not, not me. That's, I, don't, I don't know that guy. You have the wrong guy. Why would Peter deny Jesus after being so forthright just a wee bit earlier in this day. How often do we do the same thing? Is your faith stronger in these walls, in this building, in these classrooms, or outside of these walls? For the young people going to camp or who have been, there's nothing quite like the last service at the last night of camp. Your picture of faith that you are will be so full, it'll be coming out your ears and your eyes and the top of your head. But yet, within a few days and maybe even a few hours after returning home, that moment will feel far away. Maybe like it was a completely different person that had those feelings. We are weak in our flesh, and often we do what's comfortable for us whether it's right or wrong. And the more uncomfortable it is to do what's right, the less likely we are to do it. It's easy to profess faith in a room full of people that follow Jesus. It's hard out there in that world full of folks who don't follow Jesus and even some who are opposed and hostile to those who do. That's the world we find Peter in now. The man who would lay his life down for Jesus is now among people who are hostile to that same man, and he denies that he even knows him. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teachings And Jesus replied, I have spoken openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they knew what I said. Meanwhile, Jesus 
being questioned confirms exactly who he is, where he said who he was, and who he said it to. He said it was in public. It was at the synagogue or in the temple. What would Jesus have to gain from lying here? Well, for starters, possibly his life. In the various accounts of the gospel, we see a church bound and determined to put Jesus to death, but a Roman government somewhat reluctant to carry out this execution. There was an off-ramp for Jesus to deny who he was and get himself out of this whole mess that will end with his gruesome execution on a cross. Of course, there was an off-ramp before his ministry even started. If you look back into his temptation, Satan offered him to be ruler of this world. You see, Jesus, just like we are, was tempted and given opportunities to sin and to not meet his destiny and his plan. He had many chances to choose his own comfort over God's plan for his life. But like in whatever other situations he found himself, he chose God's will over himself in this situation at the temple as well. He admitted exactly who he was, knowing it was one step closer to the cross, and also that the burly guard next to him was about to smack him across the face. Yet Jesus chose death over comfort. He even prayed for that guard's forgiveness later this day while hanging on the cross that they executed him on. Notice when discussing Peter that what he told Jesus he would do is lay his life down for him. It seems at times, based on the accounts in Scripture, that Peter thought he was a bit of a protector of Jesus. Peter didn't know it at the time, but his words would be prophetic as he was eventually martyred and killed for his faith several years after Jesus' own crucifixion. But when we hear it in John at the Last Supper, he wasn't there yet. He said it, but he didn't mean it. For me personally, I was reflecting on this, and I hope I never have to choose between execution or imprisonment in my faith. And I also hope and pray that none of you do either. We're very blessed to live in a place where we don't have to choose those things. I fear, even though I love Jesus, that I might have a bit of Peter in me when push comes to shove. <clears throat> My wife always talks about um, fight or flight, and uh, whenever we're stressed, I often fight, uh, and she is a, a flight. I don't know whether we would run or uh, try to chop the guard's ears off, um, but uh, so something you know, maybe not according to God's plan might happen if I was pushed into this situation. Thankfully, though, our salvation is not established by what we are capable of, and our faith is not built upon our own capabilities. Our salvation and faith are based on what Jesus did and what he was capable of. You see, Jesus was just like us as a human. He lived a fairly long life into adulthood. And through that time, he faced all the same temptations that we face to disobey God. To put ourselves or someone or something else on God's throne and let that person or thing make decisions for us. To worship those things with our time and our energy. Or to just generally be an apathetic Towards our creator. He was tempted to sin just like us. But time and time again. He chose God's commandments. He chose God's plan for his life. And instead of reaching this point in his life as a sinner. In desperate need of salvation like us. He reached this moment. Righteous and fully blameless. In the face of a righteous God. You see, Jesus came to this execution 
in a position to turn it into a ritual sacrifice where he could serve out our punishment that we deserve for our sins. Peter would come to lay down his life for his faith in Jesus years later, but his salvation was not won on that day. Just like Peter, or just like us, Peter's salvation was won by Jesus' death on that cross. No man, no woman, no disciple, not us, not anyone could have done for ourselves what Jesus was about to do for all of us. Lord, as we think about sin and we think about temptation and we think about boldness, <clears throat> Lord, Peter is such a metaphor for our lives. Always ready to jump first and think next always stating all the things he was going to do regardless of whether or not he was capable or willing or able to do those things Lord so many times in life we're exactly the same we say a lot of big things our words are, are tough, hardened, and strong. But Lord, when we get put in these situations, our flesh is weak. And instead of turning away from the temptation, instead of continuing on with your plan for our lives, Lord, we turn away or we give in to that temptation. we see here again your willingness and your desire to be in complete unison with God's plan of salvation for mankind you lived your entire life to this moment without sin so that you could be a righteous holy and blameless sacrifice for our sins so that your death on that cross serve to be the reconciliation for the punishment that we deserve for sin, Lord. And as we look at this passage and we think about Peter, Lord, and we think about you, first, if there's someone here who, who has not put their faith in you, has not accepted that you, you did carry out that, that death, you did walk willingly into that death for our sins, Lord, that they could come to know you and accept you and profess you as their Savior, Lord. But also that we can just live in gratitude that even though we are weak, even though we are sinners, even though we deserve judgment, Lord, that you loved us so much take our place and that through your actions we are saved Lord let those in this room never forget that never forget to be thankful for it and never forget to be gracious for it Lord in gratitude in your name we pray Amen let's all please stand together
for bringing us all here together to just worship in this place father i thank you for your forgiveness for your endless love and just the mercy that you show each and every one of us lord i just pray that you be with us and just continue to watch over us as we go out into our weeks lord and just bring us back here again safely next week we love you and it's in your name we pray amen y'all have a great week